economics have been boring. And it's a little bit of an odd story as to why I would be here talking about the economics have been boring because my day job is an inventor entrepreneur. I guess as part of that, we I got together with a couple of mates and we had this idea for Christchurch we'd have this elevated garden city. We got this great feedback and then we also got a whole lot of feedback that was like, you can't do that, it's too bold. And I'm the kind of guy who doesn't really like being told you can't do that. So, <laughs> so we started having to think, um, is there any value in being an iconic world city or is it okay to just be boring? So it inherently feels good that you should be. So I've got a picture here of San Francisco and the other one is Hamilton. <laughs> Just like Hamilton with a smaller river. I don't think really want to go there. So I, I'm inherently lazy, so I jumped on the web and wanted to find out some evidence to show that it's worth being iconic versus boring. And I really struggled because cities are all different sizes. So we just did a little bit of thinking, and we, what we did is we tried to find two cities in four countries, English speaking OECD countries. And all I did was look down a list of cities tried to find two about the size of Christchurch, pick one that I thought was more iconic than the other. So that's not very scientific. So we kind of backed that up and we had a, a measure of how many hits they got on Google as a measure of iconicness. Um, <laughs> this is something I could, and you can debate about the relative iconicness, but so for example in Australia we've got Wollongong versus the Gold Coast or Oxford versus Leicester or um, Victoria versus Kitchener. So, you know, some of them are more iconic than the others. So, <clears throat> the other thing is we wanted to kind of measure economic impact and we thought we'd use house price because that kind of aggregates a whole lot of desirability. And I was hoping that we would do this and we'd say, you know, it's 20% better to be in an iconic world, an iconic versus non iconic city. The average difference in house price is 100%. So, that's a massive difference. Um, so, if you multiply that out for Christchurch, what that means is a $37 billion difference between, you know, if we're really iconic or if we're just, you know, okay. Um, so for you, you know, if, if we don't nail this, maybe your house price will fall by 100k. If we do nail it, maybe it'll go up by 200k. So it can make a vast difference. So then the real thing was, well, why on earth does this happen? Um, so, you know, what causes this, this value difference? And, and looking at the uh, economics of cities, there's a great book um, called Triumph of the City that I would encourage anyone to read. But basically, if you have innovative, creative people in your city, you'll thrive and do fantastically well. If you don't, you won't. It's really as simple as that. Um, and there's a, a, a great example with the kind of New Zealand flavour. Two people here, Peter Jackson and Angus Tate, both of them are kind of responsible for creating industries that are worth hundreds of billions of dollars a year to the region. Um, not all, all of us make that impact, but every single person does. Is there anyone in the room here who was not born in Christchurch? Yeah. <laughs> now, we would be a lot poorer if you guys weren't all here. Um, I wasn't born here either. Um, but this is my home, my kids are here. Um, and every single person who chooses to stay here or not leave makes a huge difference to our community. Um, the other thing that's underlying in the New Zealand uh, economy is um, not a lot of people know, obviously we're based on you know, dairy and tourism, but uh, the whole technology space is just overtaken as the third biggest exporter, um, it's just overtaken sheep. And so it's a, it's, it's a part of what we're thought of as sheep, but you know, it's just overtaken, it's doing all these diverse things. So it's growing really rapidly and we can have you know, really high value jobs for us long term. So one of the things about cities is once you've got a, a CBD full of people, it's really hard to be clever by yourself. You actually need a whole network of people that you can buzz off. The, the other thing is it's also really good for the environment to have a dense you know, CBD with people living in there and doing it. It's, um, it's much more beneficial for the environment. The other thing that's really interesting in um, city developments is you're starting to get uh, iconic world cities where people will actually live in the city but commute out elsewhere because they're just such great places to live. Um, so if we nail this, maybe we'll be dancing down the street. <laughs> but, it, but it's more than just the economics, you need to have the culture, you need to have the art, you need to have everything. So, if we're starting to think about the rebuild of Christchurch, how might we look at it? So if you put a, an axis here of iconic messages as cost, rebuilding exactly the same would be really expensive, not really, no one's really looking at that. Rebuilding with no planning or not much difference, 
that would be, almost certainly be less iconic, or just you know recreating the Hornby and Northlands and the CBD with a few bits. Be very cheap, but we really don't want to do that. So we've got kind of the two extremes. One is kind of a normal type thing, and that, the other is to you know fill Christchurch with Guggenheim type architecture. <laughs> now we can't, we're not rich enough for that, unfortunately. So what we should do is we need to cross off anything that's too expensive because we just don't have the money. Um, we've got to be realistic, but I'm arguing here that we have to cross off anything boring. <laughs> if, <laughs> if someone on the other side of the world can't say at the end of this process, have you heard about Christchurch City? It's the city that there has to be something. And, and so what we have to do is we have to get a little bit cleverer. Um, and now I'm going to tell you a story about creativity. Um, it's one of my favourite all-time stories. So Dr. Zeus is a good friend of mine, now I've got kids, um, and a great poet, but he, he was a mildly successful author. And then, he, he was just kind of mildly successful, then there was this whole issue about reading in the US. And someone said, you just can't read, write a great kid's story with only 250 words. So he wrote Cat in the Hat, it became the best seller ever. And then they're like, well, you know what? You actually, 250 words is too many. You need to really have a story with only 50 words, but no one could ever write a good story with 50 words. He wrote Green Eggs and Ham, it became the best seller ever. So one of the things about creating something iconic is it will almost certainly put some restrictions on what you can do, but restrictions can sometimes you know, greatly enhance creativity rather than destroy it. <clears throat> so I just want to give you a couple of examples of iconicness. So this is just what I wanted to put out there as something stupid, because it wouldn't cost any more to say, Christchurch is the blue set. <laughs> <laughs> now, it is really stupid. And then I was thinking, yeah. well, maybe you could have a blue district and a yellow district, and, <laughs> and we'd be like, it'd be the city of colours. And, and, you know, at least it's something different, it doesn't cost any more, and it could be kind of interesting. People could go crazy with it. Um, you know, one of the other cities, Oxford, had an 800 year old university, we can't do that, but well, maybe we could become the best city in the world to do a sabbatical. So, get a sabbatical city. So, we have a little icon branch from uh, Stanford and Cambridge and Harvard and um, you know, someone from Japan and Asia, and everyone comes here to do their sabbatical. They will be paid by the other people in all the spin-offs. You know, you know, you've got to, that could be a standalone, profitable little business with lots of cool things. Great to tie into our local universities. Um, and then the other, th this is kind of what kicked people off. This is um, a, bus, a couple of other people really helped with this. We basically. I spent too much time on the couch, so um, we were just sitting and thinking, we're going to rebuild half the central city and it's not going to be very tall, so what can you do that's interesting? So we'll have a whole lot of relatively low rises. People have had elevated gardens all the time, so we thought, well, why not link them all up and have this whole elevated garden city so you can go up and down the different levels of the city and you can work, walk around, never have to um, tie in with traffic. So we put this website up and got all this feedback, so it was kind of, so it's just one idea out there again. Because we have um, over a million people come through our airport, you know, to see the great South Island, and a whole bunch of them don't bother to come into Christchurch, which is criminal, really. But you know, we could do something kind of interesting with this idea. This is kind of the idea expanded a little bit to really play on the economics. So the whole car parking is on the bottom ground. Everyone can walk around. All the cycleways would be up around the city. So, and and we put these together, a couple of uh, a couple of colleagues. And then, we're no architects, so I'm happy to admit that. <laughs> um, but, but we got people excited just by a grey box with some green stuff on top. Now once you add all the creativity of all the local designers that are just fantastic, you could go wild with that. Um, and so the, the kind of the whole guts of this <laughs> is, like I said, um, I actually really don't mind what it is we choose, but we have to choose something. And you know, we want to be known not as the city that you know got slapped by a couple of really nasty earthquakes, but we came roaring back and stand that personality on the world. Thank you.